My name's David, and the chronological Bible reading for July 27th is Isaiah chapters 44 through 48. The best is yet to come, Israel, Jerusalem, Jacob, descendants, believers in God, the best is yet to come. The people of Israel had been conquered by Babylon. They were being exiled to Babylon, and yet a promise remains. Your sins will be forgiven. You will be restored. Jerusalem will be rebuilt. This is the word of Yahweh, your maker, the one who formed you in your mother's womb. He will help you. Do not fear, regardless of what you're going through. Your entire country might be completely demolished by a foreign principality. You might feel as though everything has been taken away from you, that there's no hope for the future, and God in the midst of that is saying, do not fear. In verse 3, I will pour out my spirit upon your descendants. What else really matters? All that I really want is for my children to know God. For them to taste and see that it's not just their father's words, it's actually real. God is alive and he loves them and he wants them to know him and have a relationship with him. Chapter 44 lays a picture of what it looks like to be a human being who creates cast or carved images to bow down and worship them. The one who creates them gets hungry. He needs to rest. There's a limit to his creativity. He needs food and water. We even are dependent upon our creator while we are creating something. And we're using the raw materials that he created. Nothing new has any power outside of what is granted to it from our Father in heaven. How foolish it is to find or place hope in anything other than him. In chapter 45, we see this Cyrus figure introduced. Cyrus the Great was king of Persia. Now, God had allowed Babylon, confusion, same root word as the Tower of Babel, to go and ransack Jerusalem because of the sins of the Jews. But Babylon had gone too far, and now God was raising up another one who did not know God. His name was Cyrus, and he was the most powerful king on the earth in those days. God uses this Cyrus, who was not a believer, he was not Jewish, to rescue the Jewish people. Of this Cyrus, in chapter 45, God says, I give a name to you, though you do not know me. A lot of people equated this prophecy about Cyrus to President Trump leading up to his election in 2016. A lot of people want to warn Christians, you should not put your hope in any man. And they are absolutely correct. We should not put our hope in any man. In the same way that the Jews, Isaiah, who penned these words, did not put their hope in Cyrus, but they recognized that there was one chosen by God to do God's work, even though he was not a believer. He was not a Christian in today's vernacular. I am not equating Trump to Jesus. I am not even saying that Trump is a Christian, but I am saying that God has anointed that man like he anointed Cyrus all those years ago to accomplish his purposes. The reason that the political establishment has united against Trump is because he is not one of them. The reason that establishment Republicans and Democrats alike have come together to accuse this man, to frame him, to persecute him politically, to charge him criminally, to defame him, to lie about him, and all of these other things is because they hate the fact that he wants to, in his words, drain the swamp. Cyrus in Isaiah 45 is called out by God, anointed and empowered to go against the political establishment Babylon, which again means confusion. Babylon is continually brought up in scripture from here in Isaiah, going all the way back to the beginning of the Old Testament and all the way forward to Revelation 
And in chapter 47, Isaiah talks about how Babylon will fall. Daughter of Babylon will lose her throne and be forced to sit in the dirt. Her nakedness will be uncovered. Her disgrace will be exposed. God says, I will take vengeance. Babylon is confusion in this world control and manipulation. The one who presents a truth that is not the truth and seeks to hide the real truth to keep people blind and afraid because they do not know the truth and they have no authority or conviction about who and what they are. The reason our children go off to universities and come out unbelievers is because of Babylon. Intellectualism, according to this world, wants to hide God. And anyone who believes in a young earth creation or believes that Jesus was literally physically the Son of God and literally physically rose from the grave is dismissed as ignorant and a religious zealot. True science will always point back to the creator. The Babylonian cabal system wants to keep us imprisoned with lies. And Babylon the Great will fall from the Roman Catholic Church to the world banks controlled by independent families, the monetary system, the established political system, Hollywood, big tech companies, all of it is controlled by the deep state cabal, which is the modern expression of the great Babylon. And it will fall. It's the one who gives them their money and makes money off of their people. There has been a mass worldwide coordinated attempt to hide God from people. And it is coming to an end. We in our lifetime are witnessing the fall of Babylon the Great. President Trump was the 45th president of the United States and is soon to be the 47th president of the United States. In Isaiah 45, it identifies Cyrus, even though he was not a child of God himself. He was used by God. And in chapter 47, Babylon will lose her children and her husband. Children refers to what comes out of her. The husband refers to what goes into her who provides for her. The World Bank system has been funding Babylon. There's a warning that goes along with this in chapter 48. Listen to this, house of Jacob. Those who are called by the name Israel and have descended from Judah, who swear by the name of Yahweh and declare the God of Israel, but not in truth or righteousness, be where? For the people who call themselves children of God, who say that they are Christians, and yet go to churches that teach a false or incomplete gospel, beware. These are the people who say they hold on to the truth, but they don't know God. This is what Yahweh, your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel says, I am Yahweh, your God, who teaches you for your benefit, who leads you in the way you should go. If only you had paid attention to my commands, then your peace would have been like a river and your righteousness like the waves of the sea. Leave Babylon. You can have peace, but you must come out of this cabal-driven Babylonian confusion. You must stop trying to be like the world and part of what it's doing. We must humble ourselves. It's the glory of God to conceal a matter. It's the glory of kings to search the matter out. We as Christians must search the matter out, humble ourselves, and pray like never before. God bless you, my friends. We'll see you tomorrow.